Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and in this video, we are talking about the latest news updates for SoFi Technologies, Mullen Automotive, as well as Hellbiz. For SoFi Technologies, we'll be going over an article where a JP Morgan analyst predicts the future share price of SoFi Technologies, and we will also be discussing their latest news updates and where I think the future share price is headed. After that, we'll be talking about a Mullen Automotive catalyst for investors to mark their calendar for January 25th because the share price of Mullen Automotive could explode on or after that date or even potentially rally leading up to that particular catalyst. But on the flip side, I will be going over a few warning signs regarding Mullen Automotive and how this company may be better for traders and not necessarily long-term investors such as myself. Lastly, we will wrap up the video talking about Hellbiz, ticker symbol HLBZ, and why the share price has surged by 124% and why many investors believe that it has more upside potential in the short term, mainly due to some alleged illegal short selling to where the company has launched an investigation around this. So this is absolutely blown up on social media to where investors are funneling into this company, which is increasing their overall share price due to pure excitement and enthusiasm. So for more videos on SoFi Technologies, Mullen Automotive, and Hellbiz, remember to go and smash that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, let's jump right into the analysis. SoFi Technologies essentially operates as a digital bank, and their share price currently trades for just $5.67. But with that being said, a JP Morgan analyst has recently reviewed what he thinks about SoFi Technologies. And this analyst is none other than Reginald Smith, who is speaking for JP Morgan when he says, we like SoFi's product breadth and go-to-market strategy, and think the company will ultimately be a winner in the neo-digital banking space, garnering American Express-esque brand awareness over over time, to where the analyst goes on to say that SoFi is caught in the middle of a vortex of a once-in-a-generation Fed tightening cycle that could precipitate write-downs to its $11 billion loan portfolio which isn't discussed or appreciated by Wall Street. So essentially, this JP Morgan analyst is saying that he likes the company on the surface, but right now is not a very friendly time for SoFi Technologies due to the Federal Reserve tightening their overall monetary fiscal policies such as increasing interest rates to get inflation under control, and this is negatively impacting not only growth stocks and technology stocks, but also banking stocks, and SoFi just so happens to fall under both of those categories, so they are being hit very hard in their overall share price. Now, with that being said, the analyst does expect the shares will continue to be weighed down in the short term, but over the long term, the company should make a phenomenal comeback and eventually start to return very impressive value to their various shareholders over time, which which is why he believes that this company has the potential to undergo multiple expansions and not only the business but also the overall share price. So in essence he's saying that before SoFi Technologies gets to improve and their share price will appreciate, things are going to get worse before they end up improving or getting better over time. And this is echoing exactly what I've been saying for the last year and a half, to where we're going to have to wait for the macroeconomic economy to recover before we see stocks like SoFi Technologies to gain traction. But what does all of this mean for investors? Well, the analyst reiterated a neutral rating for this company with a price prediction and price target coming in at $6, which is his 12-month 2023 price prediction. Now, with that being said, the current share price is $5.67, so clearly there is still upside left in this company despite macroeconomic uncertainty, but the average analyst, according to all of their price predictions put together and then averaged, is around or close to $7.08, so clearly there is more upside opportunity in this particular stock than what this analyst gives them credit for. In total, we have around 7 buy ratings from professionals and 5 hold ratings, with none of these professionals that were surveyed saying to sell the company. Now, I've looked further into this particular particular analyst from JP Morgan, and I am less than impressed. For instance, the analyst that was interviewed in the article is Reginald Smith, and he has a 2.5 star rating, which is not very impressive. I would much rather listen to an analyst that has a 4 or 5 star rating, such as Kevin Barker, who currently has a $7.50 price target and a buy rating, which would equate to around a 32% upside potential, rather than just a 5.82% upside potential. 
And this is not necessarily me picking on this particular analyst, but if we look at his overall track record and his success rating, it's only around 42% of the stocks he picks and the analysis he delivers are technically accurate. So that would mean that I personally have a better success track record than this two and a half star analyst. And his average return, at least over the last year, has only been 2.1, which is somewhat understandable considering the overall macroeconomic economy. But even when I walk you all through my portfolio that I'm building, which I'm trying to reach $100,000 in, we have a track record of right now averaging over a 10% return in this very negative macroeconomic environment. So overall, of course, I would take what this analyst says with a grain of salt. And clearly there is more upside potential in SoFi technologies than I think this analyst gives them credit for. However, I do agree with him in regards to the long-term analysis that he gave about the company to where over time, the stock price is set to increase over the long term and pay back their overall investors while also making them and growing their wealth and value over time. And I personally think this will be the case at the end of 2024 once the company becomes profitable. But that analyst clearly isn't as bad as other analysts that we have looked at, such as Luke Lango, who has reposted the same article a multitude of times and it's getting really old to where he believes this company could literally 24x in the next 10 years. Clearly he has not updated his article because right now it's only 7 years away. He says 10 years because he originally wrote this article back in 2020 and now it's 2023 which means we only have seven years to meet his deadline of the stock literally increasing by 24 times by 2030. It is very apparent that he is not keeping up with his analysis and he is not changing his overall perspective based on the newest data. You can see that this article is literally 20 hours old but it's just a copy and paste of an article that he has written a multitude of times already and the main thing that I debunked in this article is that he believes the company company is going to achieve a 20% market penetration by 2030, which is absolutely not in the cards for SoFi Technologies. This particular banking, fintech, and finance space is way too saturated with competition for SoFi to get a 20% market penetration. It's much too high. Now, do I think SoFi Technologies is going to perform well over the long term? Absolutely I do, which is why I personally have a 4% allocation to this company for my own personal portfolio. Portfolio. However, with that being said, I don't want to mislead investors about the growth of this company and what it could realistically achieve. So in the end, his numbers are completely off and I don't want to give investors false hope. Now, is this a good company? Yes. Am I invested into this company? Yes. Do I like this company for a long-term investment? Absolutely. But I'm not going to mislead investors by saying that this startup fintech company is going to achieve a 20% market penetration competing with stocks and companies like JP Morgan and Charles Schwab. It's just not in the cards for this company. They do different things. SoFi should be looked at as its own business and not a finance giant. They are just not there yet. So I am very critical of his overall allegations and his analysis, which in essence is extremely irresponsible and misleading to investors. So for a company such as SoFi Technologies to grow by 24 times over the next seven years is just not probable in the slightest. Otherwise, a plethora of various institutions, hedge funds, and smart money would be loading the boat with this company right now, specifically if their projections dictate whether or not they will increase by 24x. But since that's not the case, that's why smart money has not done that. So in the end, I love this company, I own this company, but don't be led astray by either investors who are undercutting this company, such as analysts who are undercutting the price appreciation and growth of this company over the long term, such as Reginald Smith, but also don't listen to people or analysts who are overhyping the company, saying that it could literally 24x, making it literally one of the best investments on the stock market right now. That's just not the case. So please always remember to do your own research and take what analysts say with a grain of salt. With that being said, let's move on and talk about Mullen Automotive, which is an electric vehicle company that trades for just 26 cents per share. Many traders are investing into this company right now, and for me personally, I am not a stock trader. I very rarely trade stocks. I am more of a long-term investor to where I invest into a stock, I average down my average cost basis and not overexpose myself to any singular risky stock with less than a 5% 
10% initial investment, and then I let the stock ride for the long term because I believe in the business model and the fundamentals and my own research that I've done on the company. Now, for Mullen Automotive, I've said in the past that I am not a long-term owner of Mullen Automotive. I don't even own Mullen Automotive, but I think traders need to be aware of this because this stock is extremely volatile, and yes, you could trade successfully off this stock as long as you time it correctly. Mullen Automotive, ticker symbol M-U-L-N, has shown Wall Street as of late that it can create handsome returns for traders because its share price has recently skyrocketed up to double-digit gains as of late. And this is mainly due to anticipation regarding their special shareholder meeting, which occurred on January 19th. The special meeting mainly focused on their reverse stock split proposal, which I think will for sure go through, and they are also focusing on another line item to increase their overall authorized share count from $1.7 billion to $5 billion. However, because a decision wasn't reached, they have postponed a decision until Wednesday of next week, which is going to be January 25th, and this could act as a phenomenal catalyst for MULN shareholders if you plan to trade this company. Again, Again, I'm not recommending buying this company or holding this company or even trading this company, but if you are already into this company and you're focused on it, your best bet would be to get in and get out with profits intact. I don't think this is a good long-term investment as of right now because the company hasn't proved their business model due to this company being a pre-revenue company. They haven't delivered vehicles, they only have a few pre-orders, they aren't manufacturing many vehicles, and they have yet to become profitable or deliver on any of their major promises. So until the company does that and proves themselves, then they do not earn my cash or an investment. But for sure, you can trade this company and make some money off of it as long as you time it correctly. However, for me, I'm going to stay out of this and I will just watch the show. I also want to bring to your attention that many investors have lost patience with Mullen Automotive and their MULN share price and stock. And the reason for this is because while a reverse stock split will increase the overall share price of Mullen above $1 so they can remain listed on various indexes, overall, once a company does a reverse stock split, it normally allows for short interest to infiltrate this company even more and beat down the share price again. That's why I don't think it's wise to buy and hold this company for the long term because we know the share price will be beaten back down. We've seen this happen so many times once once a company performs a reverse stock split. On top of that, Mullen's finances just don't look very good, which we will talk about more in the next article. Mullen is in desperate need of cash, and to raise cash, they are stuck with one of two main options. The main reason for this is that they are a pre-revenue company, which means they are not selling vehicles. The only cash that is coming in right now, technically, on a substantial basis, would be their pre-orders. So to raise cash and capital, the company is either going to have to go into more debt through finance or issuing new shares, which is going to dilute the value of existing shareholders, which is why holding this company again is probably not the best move. And if you are in this company, maybe trading it would be the best opportunity if you are going to be a wise investor. Therefore, even if management decides to do a 1 for 10 reverse stock split, we also have Mullen having the potential to increase the number of authorized shares up to 5 billion. So either way, we're either going to see the share price get beat back down once once the reverse stock split happens, and or we're going to see shareholder dilution. If you want to get into this company, get in and get out once you make a profit. Don't be too greedy and stay in because you might be catching a falling knife here. Investors clearly need to be cognizant and remember that short interest often increases following a reverse stock split, and that's exactly what I was alluding to earlier. And according to data from Fintel, we can see that the short interest for Mullen is actually increasing as time progresses and as they move further toward that reverse stock split, which potentially could take place on the 25th, so clearly mark your calendars for that. The stock is going to be extremely volatile. So what are some other risks and ongoing concerns for this particular company? Well, since their 10-K form finally came out, we have a section from this form which highlights various risk factors, which says, and I quote, our ability to continue as a going concern is dependent upon our ability to raise additional debt or equity financings or enter strategic partnerships. Since our inception, we have financed our 
operations through convertible debt and preferred stock financings. We intend to continue to finance our operations through debt or equity financing and or strategic partnerships. The failure to obtain sufficient financing or strategic partnerships could adversely affect our ability to achieve our business objectives and continue as a going concern, end quote. And this should be very concerning for investors because it's essentially saying this company is not fundamentally strong financially, and here's how we know this. For the full year ended September 30th of 2022, Mullen posted no revenues. However, they spent around $21.65 million on research and development and $75.3 million on general and administrative expenses. That would total an operating loss of just under $97 million, which is a very unfavorable comparison comparison to where a year ago they only had an operating loss of around $22.4 million. So they are not decreasing their overall losses, they are increasing their overall losses, and they are not making any revenues to offset any of this. So clearly Mullen has to raise capital and cash to stay above water, otherwise they risk going out of business. This is why stock traders have taken this opportunity to make profits from the dramatic price spikes that have occurred in their overall share price due to their upward momentum when any good news comes out about this company. However, now you are equipped and prepared to understand the risks involved in this company and how it's not necessarily a good long-term buying opportunity, but if you are a smart trader, you could walk away from this company with some profits. However, for me personally, I will be staying out of this company. Another fantastic trading opportunity would be in the company named Hellbiz, ticker symbol HLBZ. If you're not familiar with this company, this company essentially is a micro-mobility company which offers the ability for people to ride e-scooters and pay for e-bikes and e-mopeds all on one platform. So it helps people and tourists navigate various cities, which is quite fun and it's a good business model. This company is currently trading at just 20 cents per share, but recently the share price has surged upwards of 124%, so literally multiple traders have more than doubled their overall money. The reason for this momentum is because the company plans to investigate short selling of its shares. And I'll explain what short selling is later in the video, but essentially right now we're going to focus on how this company is planning to handle this alleged illegal short selling of their HLBZ shares. The CEO of the company has revealed that he is willing to meet with third parties to further discuss this matter to investigate the illegal or the alleged illegal short selling of the company's stock. The main reason for this is they are following the direct footsteps of Genius Group, ticker symbol GNS, which also announced similar class action suits and investigations, which has caused the overall share price of the GNS stock to surge by 400%. This is why traders are identifying companies who are investigating illegal or allegedly illegal short selling companies to launch these investigations because during these investigations, the share prices of these companies normally increase. For the HLBZ stock, the company has fallen by around 90% and the CEO of the company is saying that this is due to short sellers compressing and depressing the overall share price illegally. He even says, and I quote, these activities have not only only affected the value of our stock, but have also forced us to make difficult decisions such as layoffs. Clearly, he's referring to the allegedly illegal short selling from institutions and investors. He goes on to say, we will not tolerate these illegal activities that artificially depress the value of our stock, and we are committed to protecting the interests of our shareholders and ensuring that the value of their investment is not artificially depressed, end quote. So essentially, the the CEO is blaming short sellers for the cause of the 90% loss of the shares values. Now for me personally, I just don't think this company is a very strong company. However, for an investor who is looking to trade a company, you could time this company to where you could make a lot of profits. And I actually think the company has further upside potential, at least in the short term. As the short selling investigation proceeds and more news comes out, this is going to act as a catalyst to increase the share price even more, greater than the 124% share price surge that we have experienced recently. And due to social media picking up this news story, we have seen the average volume of this company 
company, which on average was just around about 18.6 million, the volume has exploded upwards of 311 million. So clearly traders are piling into this company to make a profit off of all of this news. So what can we do as investors and traders to make money off of this? The main question we want to identify is, can the HLBZ stock continue to rally? Well, first let's define short selling. According to this author and article, short selling is when investors believe the company is overvalued so they borrow shares of the company on the open market and then they sell the shares back to the market at a lower price, thus pocketing the difference. Now, I want to make it very clear that short selling is not in any way illegal. However, the illegal short selling comes when you are selling shares that literally don't exist, and this is extremely hard to prove in a court of law. However, whether or not the CEO's suspicion of illegal short selling activity is true or not, investors and traders can make a very handsome profit from this company due to the news coming out about these allegations. To where, just like how the share price of the GNS Genius Group stock surged 400%, we can see a similar thing happen for the HLBZ share price in stock. So overall, there is more upside opportunity left in this story, but please be careful, and if you don't know how to trade, then you may be better off just avoiding this company in general. But with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts about any of these companies or news stories. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.